<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and welcome to the Mazdon Dropship Business Limited Q1 F24 conference call hosted by ICICS authorities. As a reminder, the participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to the Chief of from ICACI Securities. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining the call today. At the outset, I would like to thank the management for giving us an opportunity to host this call. On the management, we have today Shri Sanjeev Singhal, Chairman and Managing Director, Edition Charge and Director of Finance, Sri Biju George, Director of Building, and Sri Patti Pranik, Director of Corporate Planning and Personal. Without much ado, I would invite the single for opening remarks, with which we will open the floor for an interactive Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Amit. Uh, good afternoon, uh, all the participants to this meeting. We had to inform that as far as Q1 is concerned, Mazgaon Dock uh, shipbuilders' performance has been fairly stable. Uh, our revenues uh, compared to uh, CTLY as well as uh, the last quarter of the previous financial year are quite stable. The profits are on the higher side, uh, taking the other income into consideration. And execution is as per the execution progress is as per the plan. Uh, we are targeting delivery of uh, the third ship of Project 15 Bravo, that is a missile destroyer, uh, sometime end of uh, second quarter this year or third early third quarter this year. We have already delivered two vessels, one in 2021 and 2022, and uh, continuing with the same trend that these two vessels were delivered prior to the contractual delivery date. The third vessel is also expected to, to be delivered four to five months prior to the delivery date. Uh, in addition, uh, as the audience may be aware, uh, we have received an order for MRLC of one number of uh, submarine. Uh, this is a German submarine which was placed into service some 26 years ago. It has come to Mazdaon Dock Shipbuilders Limited for uh, a medium repeat and light life certification. Total order value is approximately 2,700 crores. So, company is doing well. Uh, we have submitted uh, the a price bid for uh, six number of AIP fitted submarines under project P75I. Uh, as we proceed, I am sure that uh, there would be questions on that and uh, as for the questions, we will submit the clarifications. So, I uh, propose that we can move ahead with the questions of the participants. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. We will be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. The confirmation zone will keep your line is in the question queue. You may press star and two if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For persons using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Jay Shah with PS Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please, Jay uh, I think there is some uh, disturbance here, sir. Uh, probably uh, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, no, sir. Uh, uh, good results uh, and and uh, really uh, uh, in, in line with the uh, management uh, guided to uh, I have a couple of questions, sir. Uh, uh, so, what are you doing for uh, uh, submarines uh, uh, which will be fitted with AIP? Uh, so, it has been uh, in uh, tie up with TKMS, uh, correct, sir? Yes, this is in uh, collaboration with TKMS Germany. Okay. Uh, second, sir, uh, any uh, guidance uh, on uh, the three submarine orders? Sir? which has been in the news of, uh, uh, and you know, uh, Mr. Modi when he visited France. Uh, uh, there was a lot of discussion, but uh, nothing concrete in terms of uh, the flow, uh, which will finally happen to myself. Any guidance uh, you would want to keep on that? The flow doesn't happen uh, so fast, because these are very high-value orders, and uh, although uh, 
is a part of the same platform scorpion submarines so considering that there is a significant time uh, has elapsed between the previous order and these three uh, submarines which are called additional submarines or add on submarines so these are not exactly the same submarines lot many equipments uh, would be changing these submarines these platforms are likely to be more potent some discussions have to be there dev is also in the process of finalizing the equipments and uh, some discussions would be held with the uh, background of ship builders and our collaborator naval group so as far as order is concerned yes uh, that would be coming to masgon dock but it would be taking us some amount of time uh, at present it would be difficult to quantify but we can expect maybe in 4 to 6 months uh, things should be in place Uh, and last question sir from my side uh, there was masgon dock also participated in the warship design bureau i mean uh, can you throw light on uh, what is uh, uh, the ip for and uh, 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 what is the outcome i believe this is for p76 but the uh, ship can throw some light on that side that was the last question ship design bureau we have entered into a mou this is with respect to the indigenization of the scorpion fleet equipment of scorpion fleet we have already delivered uh, five submarines the sixth one is targeted to be delivered this year by march 24 and we are also talking uh, for additional three submarines so this uh, requires that this fleet of submarines is required to be maintained for next 30 to 40 years uh, which would require a significant dependence on the foreign collaborators to avoid that uh, mgl has undertaken a, a very ambitious program with respect to indigenization of uh, almost 8000 components of uh, what goes into this submarine in addition uh, warship design bureau is also working towards the indigenization of submarine under the project p76 so we are in discussion with warship design bureaus how these efforts of indigenization which wdb is looking at and which mgl is targeting they can be mutually beneficial for both the programs there is the current scorpion program as well as the 76 program so uh, we'll be working on uh, these aspects uh, jointly sure sure uh, that's what they say thank you ladies and gentlemen a reminder keep yourself to one question and no follow up question Our next question comes from the line of Rohit Prasadanti. Please go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity. Speaking uh, on the, uh, so could you quantify the number of vessels and uh, any you know, technology aspects? Like, will it be AIP? Will it be digital? Like, what kind of uh, uh, technology are we thinking about at this point in time? Are you talking with respect to additional submarines? Yes, sir. The six. Oh uh, yeah, additional submarines. We are also not very clear at this point of time whether uh, this would be with AIP or without AIP, or uh, all the options are open. In fact, I mean, because AIP, indigenous AIP, a mechanized version is still not developed. But at the same time, we understand that there would be a certain time uh, uh, by which time we deliver the first submarine uh, out of this additional three submarines. so i believe there would be certain options that in case the marinized version of aip is ready uh, then uh, what would be the scope with integration of aip and in case the aip version is not ready then what would be the scope without the aip so these options we believe would be there but the course of the final contract are yet to be finalized uh, this is the part sir uh, so my second question is on the uh, the retrofit or maybe you know life extension program for the old uh, submarines that yep. we have at this point in time so all the sindhu gosh sindhu class sindhu gosh class of uh, submarines i believe a lot of them were uh, uh, extension but do you think is there a scope for uh, them to come back to you in terms of uh, the life extension certificate programs like similar order what we have one at the moment we have done uh, on command purani at the moment we have done uh, emergency of the first submarine of the ssk class by certification the second one is already has uh, brought out by the chairman some of the progress so we expect that the third and fourth will also come to nail only because uh, uh, we have built this 
As far as third and fourth is concerned, they were built at MDL. They were built at MDL, so it will come to MDL. So similarly to the uh, other scorpion program, there is a talk already in progress. We we will be doing uh, retrofitting of these scorpions with an AIP during their normal refit that will come. So these are the uh, that will happen on every submarine, um, on the six submarines basically. So this is the plan of flow. So these submarines will come into refit after about six years of, or seven years of their uh, exploitation in service. Considering that the first submarine of Spin class was delivered in 19, uh, as per the provisional timelines, we are targeting the exit of the first submarine to be somewhere in the middle of 25. Got it, got it. Thank you. That's it from us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and 1. The next question comes from the line of District Soshi with Whitestone Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is uh, regarding this uh, submarines uh, for uh, uh, higher research uh, uh, games in Germany. Uh, what would be the size of this project? And uh, secondly, on the Scorpion submarines uh, with the France, uh, the size of that project as well? Uh, as far as the size of the AIP fitted six number submarines for which we have already submitted the size bid on 1st of August, uh, as per the AON, the cost involved is 43,000 crores. Uh, I would not be able to, considering that the price bids have been submitted both by Mazgon Dock Shipbuilder Submitted as well as by LNT, uh, it would not be appropriate uh, for me to, to come out with any numbers. I can only say that uh, we expect that uh, the pricing compared to AON uh, would be significantly higher. And clearly with respect to the additional submarines, as I said, uh, the scope is yet to be finalized. So we are expecting those discussions to start shortly. Uh, and what kind of options are there, whether it be AIP, without AIP, or both the options are there. So the pricing would depend on that. But broadly, the database is available both with the Navy as well as uh, with MDL, uh, because this is a platform which has been under execution for quite some time. We have already delivered five submarines. Uh, the sixth one is slated for delivery in March 24. So broadly, the items and the prices are known. Uh, so uh, depending upon the additional scope, uh, this should not be very different. In this 43,000 crore order where LNT is also competition, uh, yeah. is it split between the chair or it's, uh, whoever uh, wins gets the entire order? Uh, as per the RFP structure as it stands now, there is no split and we say either it is 06 or 60. And uh, the uh, order which we have received, received for uh, repeat and life certification, uh, it will be executed over how much time? Over 33 months. 33 months. We have received on 30th of June. The time period as per the contract is 33 months. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, Please press star and one. Next question comes from the line of Amit Dixit, ICACI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you uh, for taking my question. I have uh, a few questions. The uh, first one is essentially on on the uh, on the P seventy five I again. Can you be louder, Amit? Yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> The first question is on the P75 item for which you and LNP have uh, submitted the bid. Uh, there was another name doing rounds of uh, Yangwa Water uh, or uh, this South Korean uh, company. So have they also submitted their bid or is it only two of you? No, DSMB Korea, uh, MDL was trying to play up with DSMB Korea uh, around a year back. Uh, they had uh, shown interest in playing up with MDL. Subsequently, uh, we understand that DSME Korea has been taken over by Hanwa. And after this takeover, uh, they have uh, withdrawn from the project. So they have confirmed to us in writing that they are no, no more interested in the project. And accordingly, MPL tied up with the TKMS. 
Okay, so we are no longer involved in the Okay, sir. Last time you indicated that there are uh, there are several other orders for a network platform for which you would be betting. So uh, one of them was, of course, the uh, thirty-six thousand four hundred crore Corvette order. Any update on that? No, the Corvette order they have not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> building, yeah, Mr. Biju yeah. George. Hmm? Yeah, they have not uh, issued the RFP. Uh, so we are. Uh, expecting uh, the end of uh, this year so uh, that's that's the update on that okay uh, thanks so much sir i will get back to you there are some part interesting question thank you next question comes from the line of dikshit doshi with financial advisors please go ahead uh, yeah, a couple of more questions. Firstly, uh, in this 232 crore income, was there any one of like any LD right back or anything? Uh, no, the, uh, as far as quarter one is concerned, there is no LD right back. In quarter four of 2023, there was one uh, LD right back of 73 crores. That was also part of the revenue from uh, operations. Okay, this quarter there was no right back. No, no right back, but uh, just for the benefit of the participants, uh, uh, as far as LD is concerned, this uh, LD has been withheld and levied by Navy on all the submarines which we have delivered, the five submarines, uh, and we have received a refund with respect to the first submarine. So, with respect, uh, with respect to one submarine and with respect to other uh, five, other four submarines also, we have put up our case to Indian Navy, which is under process. And we accept, uh, expect that uh, with time these also would be refunded. Okay, and I think uh, uh, this is this is around six thousand six hundred crore, right? Uh, in the last call you have. Yeah, approximately one hundred fifty to one seventy five crores one for each submarine. So for five vessels, uh, it would be around seven hundred seven hundred fifty crores uh, approximately for eight hundred crores. Uh, one we have already received. So for balance four vessels. Okay, and uh, last question. Uh, so generally, uh, you know what the guide is. So generally, we see the uh, margins considering the other income. Uh, now, if I see uh, last year, full year, our EBT margin was around 16%, and uh, even this quarter, it is around 16%. Uh, so just wanted to understand one thing. So as we will move ahead in uh, the projects, uh, let's see 15 alpha frigates and all the comes, at the end of the life, uh, in terms of project execution, that time uh, the advances from customers uh, will be lower. Uh, mm -hmm. So, to, uh, what kind of margins, uh, you know, we can uh, sustain on the downside? Considering that this is a, a revolving kind of a cash balance, and we are expecting fresh orders during the intervening period. Uh, as of now, we don't envisage any significant impact on the margins, including the other income. Uh, in addition, uh, as I have been uh, maintaining that uh, during the execution of a project, uh, we maintain on a slightly on a conservative side because the uh, cost is still may not be discovered fully. But if a platform gets delivered uh, prior to the contractual date, it uh, definitely has a positive impact on the overall profitability as regards that ship. So we did deliver two ships uh, ahead of schedule. The third ship is also slated to be delivered ahead of schedule for four to five months. So whenever we are making a delivery at the contractual delivery date, uh, what we have observed is that there is a definite uh, positive impact on the profitability. The third ship is also likely to be delivered uh, uh, four to five months early. Uh, so let us see if that effect would be captured either in quarter two or uh, quarter three. Okay. Okay. Fine. That's it for me. Our question comes from the line of Colonel Prashant Yadav, Mount Intra Finance. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, one question. Uh, when we talk about the uh, you know order book, as you said, from the thousand crores, does that include the cost of the platforms which are going to be there on the? Uh, and if that be so, then what is the uh, percentage of that uh, those platforms? I, I didn't tell you very clearly. Uh, our order book right now is 9,000 crores, comprising of three platforms, uh, seven, um, Project 15 Bravo, 
uh, which is approximately 17,000 crores. Uh, another project, 17 Alpha, which is four number of brigades, which would be uh, another 18,000 crores and 4,000 crores for the last submarine project P-75. In addition, approximately 2,700 crores MRLC, which we have received recently. So this is the broad backup of 39,000 crores. Uh, yeah. Can you one question was uh, the the cost of the platform? I didn't get it. Project uh, this is the platform cost. You are not audible. Uh, you are not a speaker. Could you please lift your hand, sir? Hello. Yes, please. Hello. Yes, please. Is it audible now? Yeah, better. Continue. Hello. Yes, please continue. So my question was, does the uh, project include the cost of the platform? What do you mean by platform? Uh, the platform is the sh sh project comprises of two ships. The, uh, what we call as platform is the ship itself. So there are uh, the entire uh, residual order book comprises of the equipment cost, the yard effort, and the uh, own planned usage, so many you know, costing elements. So I understand your question uh, is uh, what is the percentage uh, of equipment in the residual order book? Is that your question? Yes, the so equipment like uh, the kind of radars which are going to be there or the uh, it does it, does, is the cost included in that platform? Yeah, it, 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 includes, it, includes, it does include that. Yes. And what will be the percentage of the? See that, uh, uh, see uh, the Shipbuilding uh, is like a construction industry, not like a mass production. So at every every quarter, uh, the uh, it, it can fluctuate, but uh, generally it uh, fluctuates between uh, 50 to 65 percent. Remaining will be the labor and uh, other uh, oil plant usage oil services, plant usage services, uh, subcontracting uh, expenditures, all that. question comes from the line of Rohit Natrajan with Antiques of Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity again. So my question is on the repeat of P-17A and the possibility of KON for NGD, Next Generation Destroyer. Any color on that? Yeah, we, we expect positive uh, movement in both these projects as far as next generation, generation destroyers is concerned. Uh, as for the discussions, uh, what the information we have is that earlier the discussion was uh, six number of uh, next generation destroyers. Now the number has been increased to eight in two phases of four numbers. Uh, and uh, with respect to 17 Bravo, the four ships of 17 Alpha frigates. Uh, there also positive movement is definitely there. Uh, so we expect uh, the number to be on similar lines, seven numbers. And Amical continues to be a very strong contender for both these platforms. As well as destroyers are concerned, nobody else has constructed the destroyers. Uh, and uh, towards capability enhancement, uh, as informed earlier, we have placed an order for a floating dry dock, dry dock uh, which can accommodate the next generation destroyer. This uh, is a capex uh, uh, costing around 500 crores. Uh, this order has been placed uh, in the month of uh, June. Got it, sir. Got it. Sir, uh, uh, just to touch on the Goa shipyard part, uh, any color on what could be their uh, you know, uh, execution track uh, 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 target for this year, given that they also have a very exceptionally strong order backlog? Uh, actually, we do own a 47% equity in Goa shipyard, but uh, there is no management control uh, or board representation on GSL. So, they operate uh, totally independently. 
So only the profit figures of Goa shipyards and network they have an impact on Mazgaon of builders limited. But otherwise, we are not involved in their management or execution or other details. Got it, sir. Thank you, sir. That's it for us. Our next question comes from the line of Rahul, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, I just wanted to say that uh, we have a pretty strong order book. Uh, so do you feel any uh, the any skill set? Do we have the required skill set to deliver this order for time and execution? And uh, we see that there is a little uh, bit in the uh, revenue. So we have a strong order book on one hand, and there is a little uh, in the revenue front. So. Uh, how is how is that uh, kind of working together? I have been explaining this thing as far as the shipping industry is concerned. This is not an industry which can be compared on a quarter to quarter basis. Uh, in fact, what we see is the company has been growing at a very very healthy pace. Uh, 2023, we saw a revenue increase of uh, 35 percent. That kind of a performance uh, cannot be repeated on a year to year basis. But we definitely see a growth. Uh, of maybe 10 to 12 percent or higher, the uh, picture would emerge better at the end of uh, middle of third quarter, uh, I would say. But uh, we are on the right track. And on a quarter to quarter basis, uh, minor blips uh, cannot be taken into consideration. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. No issues with respect to the skill set. For the manpower, we have capacity to build seven submarines and ten warships simultaneously. So we can take 21 vessels simultaneously. Compared to right now, we have only six ships and two submarines with us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. Our next question comes from the line of Amit Dixit with ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. So, yeah, so thanks for uh, taking my question again. I have a couple of questions. One is that, you know, we have recently developed a missing submarine submarine. So if you could uh, just go to mention that, you know, for as far as we expect of that in the time frame of and there would be other uh, uh, concreteness also for this. So this is a research and development project undertaken by MDL, uh, primarily for the purpose of indigenization of submarine. Now this would be a multi-role submarine, which can be deployed for special operations, uh, as well as for oceanography, as well as for tourist purposes, as well as can be used in rivers also. Uh, we have recently successfully tested the pressure hull and uh, as per the timelines we are expecting that this uh, submarine should be testing waters by somewhere end of 24. Uh, to our knowledge we are not aware of any anybody else uh, who is right now uh, into the construction of uh, an indigenous submarine uh, within the country. Uh, this could be a game changer uh, once uh, successful. So this is fully indigenous, all components are indigenous. Yeah, all, all, all components are being indigenized, being sourced from indigenous sources. What would be the cost of the uh, summary? Uh, it is evolving. Right now we would not be talking, but uh, it, 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 it is a cost which we feel it, uh, is the right cost for research and development. Uh, the second question is also essentially uh, the question of the previous participant. Uh, just wondering, you know, last time when we started building submarines, then it was a long time back. Uh, now, uh, if the P75I order comes to us and the P75 repeat order, let us, I mean, the uh, submarine that we contemplated it comes to us. Uh, can we still build 11 submarines simultaneously, or can because or our some of the people have retired, therefore we need to uh, search for uh, I mean uh, the 
uh, on engineering side particularly, do we need to search for uh, more people? And therefore, the uh, simultaneous building could be impacted? No, we don't see any such uh, constraints. Uh, as far as the skill set is concerned, we have a healthy skill set of uh, both executives as well as non-executive staff available. A uh, lot of outsourcing sources have also been developed during the meantime. And in any case, as far as these projects are concerned, of course, we continue to uh, maintain that we have the capability and capacity to take 11 submarines simultaneously. But just as a matter of clarification, as far as the additional submarines are concerned, we expect that uh, this uh, should be finalized early, early. Uh, whereas uh, the AIP fitted submarines, uh, this would involve certain technical evaluations, certain field evaluation tests at both the places uh, by Navy, both at uh, MDL CMS and uh, LNT is Navantia Spain. So, uh, and certain discussions and finalization of equipment fit. So, this would be a while away. Uh, so, uh, in case by the time the specifications are uh, frozen, so there would not be a, these two orders uh, coming simultaneously, that kind of a scenario is not likely to happen. But yes, some overlap would be there for which uh, the yard is quite capable along with the refits and the repairs of the scope platforms as and when they come. We said we will not lose because we have a mixed bag of workers. They are permanent and there is a uh, on contract. So as these permanent guys are retiring this contract people are getting adapted as permanent. So basically there is a change. Continuity. Continuity is there as far as uh, skill sets are concerned. Uh, sir, here just, uh, you know, uh, again a follow-up from here. In 1989, there was a plan that okay, we would have 24 submarines uh, by 2024. And uh, if I really look at this, then uh, only 375 to 5 submarines are there out of 24. And the old submarines that we have, I mean, I don't know how much request we can do to these submarines essentially. So uh, where I'm coming from is that uh, there is an urgent need for us to actually uh, uh, manufacture these submarines. So in this scenario, you still think that a split in the order is not possible with this stage? The split in the order uh, doesn't work out technically because uh, there is a technology transfer involved. The RFP has not been designed in a manner where the foreign collaborator would be uh, willing to transfer the technology to two players. Uh, it doesn't uh, work out cost effective. So, uh, had the technology uh, transfer not involved, then it's a different uh, case altogether. But considering the nuances of the RFP and the platform itself, we are, we don't envisage that any kind of a split is feasible. The cost, the collaborative cost will have to play both the sides. Mm. Actually, I cut the project cost. Quite a lot. Okay, sir. The last question from my side before I turn it to Q is that there was a media article suggesting that uh, Navy might think of uh, uh, taking some 10 submarines on rent. By the time, you know, to the electric submarines again, by the time actually you build these submarines under either P-75I or P-75 extension. Uh, is it true or is it just, you know, media speculation? We would not be able to comment on this. Uh, uh, of course, it's, uh, you know, secret, <laughs> confidential uh, you know, information. So I don't think, they, they don't share it with us. Uh, we will not be able to comment. But, Maybe they can think of such things, but you know this life extensions which you are doing to the submarine, that is actually filling the gap to some extent. That is certifying, you know, another 10 years. See, the submarines are normally 30 years life, so you can get uh, another lease of, new lease of 10 years. So that is one way of, you know, putting off. Because the designer always has certain safety margin when he designs, so he, that assessment is done after the is over. Okay, uh, thank you so much, sir. Our next question comes from the line of Maruti Sarda, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations for giving a good set of numbers. And uh, 
my question is uh, regarding the top line so last year we completed 1800 approximately the top line which we delivered and currently 7600 7500 okay and currently we are having unexpected uh, orders worth around 39000 crore right yeah. And um, I'm just assuming that the build which we have filed, where L&D is also participating, if we get that particular project as well, the value will be around forty thousand crores for that project, right? Forty-three uh, thousand crores is the A1 value. I said uh, we are expecting a significantly higher order value. Okay, so uh, so let's say forty-five, forty-five or forty-seven thousand crores. So if we combine these two figures, which is the value which we are already having. As unexpected project, thirty-nine thousand crore plus the thirty-seven thousand crore, the ballpark number will be around eighty thousand crores. So these projects will be executed over one tenure in terms of number of years. It can be it can be a ballpark number. I don't expect uh, you know a concrete number. Just to get an idea that what EDR we can do our top line. Uh, I'll I'll take this uh, into couple of parts. Like if you uh, talk of 39,000 crores, uh, it comprises of right now we have two shifts of in Bravo. One we are targeting for delivery this year, by September, September October, and the last uh, ship of uh, 15 Bravo we will be delivering middle of 24 next year. Then another project is there which is 17 Alpha. Uh, Which comprises of four number of sales frigates. Uh, we uh, target the first delivery of uh, frigate in middle of 24 next year, and then subsequently one ship each year. Third project being the uh, sixth boat of uh, B-75, sixth submarine. We are targeting for uh, March 24 or maybe early 24-25. Uh, with that, this project would be over. So, considering this, the existing. In addition, the MRLC project would be somewhere around 26, 27. So, considering this, uh, I see the current uh, book to be exhausted by 28, and including the base and depot spares and the uh, liquidation of warranty defects, uh, another one year. So, by 29. And uh, considering as far as uh, six submarines of uh, with AIP funded project P73, I is concerned uh, this order placement would take approximately 18 to 24 months, so taking two years. And this period uh, for the first submarine, I believe uh, the first submarine is required to be delivered in next six years, and then subsequently one submarine each year. So that would be a project from today of around 10 to 12 years. So you can very Consider if it is we are in 23 to buy 34, 35. If these orders are there, so uh, this would be liquidated by 34, 35. Okay. So, so it, in addition, we are also expecting uh, orders uh, from the three of next generation destroyers as well as uh, follow on uh, with respect to the frigates. That is the 17 Bravo. So these orders will be in addition to the what we have discussed just now. And what is the what is the value for these orders? Uh, next generation destroyers, uh, all eight uh, could be in, in the range of eighty thousand crores, and uh, more than eighty thousand crores. And seventeen uh, Bravo, uh, we have the existing order, which is uh, around twenty six, twenty seven thousand crores. Uh, so considering uh, four, uh, four numbers, and uh, if we consider similar phone numbers. This uh, project in Bravo, I am told that instead of seven numbers, which was uh, four in Portugal and three by GRC, the 17 Bravo Navy is considering for eight numbers. So the total order size was 45,000 crore uh, in 2015. So eight years have elapsed, so there would be normal acceleration. Uh, so this eight numbers uh, should be in the range of 60,000 crores. So, so, so hearing all this, uh, I think it will be prudent to assume that we can grow our top line uh, 15 to 20 percent CAGR over next 10 years. Yeah, if order flow is smooth, we are confident that the yeah. thing would be growing in a healthy manner. Yeah, that's, that's uh, really heartening to know, and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question comes from the line of Avinash, individual investor. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, congrats for uh, the wonderful results. 
Uh, I want to know about uh, uh, what went well because I read recently that it won a award from Madhugao. So, uh, will it impact any? Will that have a negative impact on the margin because if it's outsourced? Uh, I didn't get your question clearly. Can you please repeat it? Yeah. Yeah, there is a company called Aventel which got an order from Mazda. So having uh, known that, will have will will outsourcing. It is the outsourcing that is what I understand. So will it have any impact on the profit margin? As far as outsourcing is concerned, outsourcing is a normal part of our operations. Uh, core operations are being handled directly by Mazda and Oxford Limited, but many of our operations are outsourced. So that is a part of our execution strategy. Definitely, it doesn't have any negative impact. But at the same time, I am not sure with respect to uh, eventual the blame which you are taking. I don't think we have outsourced. Maybe a small order uh, for something. Uh, it's not a major order. Was not. Uh, I don't think any major order has been outsourced to eventual. <coughs> has left the question queue. We'll move on to our next question, which is from the line of Sakarthru Chakraborty, Chakraborty Family Office. Please go ahead. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, let me start with a couple of questions. Uh, the employee benefits expenses, is it fair to say that this is a bit included in the first quarter because you have annual bonuses that we pay out? And is this generic year over year, or is this not something which has some seasonality to it? So, uh, there is no, nothing like front loading the employee expenses in the first quarter. Uh, nothing of the sort. Okay. Uh, and then the follow-up question that I have also on this is the subcontract cost. This one, I think we had a lot of conversation on that today. Um, so my question really is, uh, I mean, this cost has been gradually increasing over the last two financial years, which is fine. But is this really strategy-wise the best play that a defense company can do? Because I, I mean, on the one hand, costs are driven out, so profit margins are better. But on the other hand, you also have a lot of expertise which probably is not within the company. So I just wanted to say on a strategic side, how do you feel or, or how do you think subcontracting should be done? Should it be more... Uh, non-technical, should it be more operational, and should the strategy components still stay in-house, or start to think about it in general? Uh, I can assure you, as far as all the core operations are concerned, uh, they are being directly executed by MPL, and uh, we have been able to manage and deliver the platforms at a faster rate and within time by a judicious mix of uh, what we execute ourselves and what we outsource. This uh, strategy is likely to continue, uh, considering that the timelines are being compressed and this is the requirement of the day that the platforms are delivered uh, faster and at the earliest. Uh, at the same time, this doesn't uh, jeopardize or impact uh, in any way uh, MDL capabilities or profitability adversely. See, so when we subcontract, we know the activity. We have to qualify the subcontractor. It's not that uh, we don't know what, what, we, what the subcontractor is doing. We actually teach them how to do it. So there's no loss of uh, any skills or any knowledge. So only getting it done more cost effective. That's all. Okay. Uh, I think other operational pieces are, are quite in place, so I don't have a lot of questions on that. One last question that I had really is on the shareholding concern. Uh, I think the government of India stake right now, so MOD is around 84.83 percent. From the mistake, there is just a mandate that public listed companies have to bring it to 25 percent. My question really is: Is there an exception that we think will happen for NDL, or do you, in future, plan to go for some sort of equity dilution? Or maybe this is too early to ask that question already. Actually, as far as the CPSCs are concerned, there is a separate uh, ministry altogether and a separate uh, uh, administrative office become, uh, which takes care of uh, the disinvestments. So they, they 
look at the right time when uh, the disinvestment should take place, when further investments should uh, disinvestment should take place, and in case any exemptions are required. So it is become uh, who would be processing or who would be advising us on this behalf. So as a company, we are not uh, concerned or uh, controlling any kind of a decision with respect to further disinvestment. All right. Thank you, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to uh, give us to interact, and uh, also thank you for all the. Uh, with the wishes and the well wishing which we have uh, garnered from the uh, market and the investors, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we can close this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you can now disconnect your lines. Okay, thank you.